Good morning, Moore County students. I hope you're having a great summer and staying safe, and I hope you're having a good time at the same time. My name is Miss Susie, and this is Beanie. A lot of you know her in the Moore County Schools. She's visited lots of times. We like to do the reading program, and we like to do pet responsibility. And so that all came to a stop when um, the virus hit, so Beanie doesn't understand social distancing. She's having a hard time, and she would love to see everyone in person and give you lots of love. But until we can resume doing that, we're going to try something new. We want to go ahead and read stories to you. So we're going to read you a great story about two bobbies. It's about a dog and a cat who became best friends when they encountered a terrible hurricane in New Orleans. And it hit back in 2005. The name of the hurricane was Katrina. That was before you were born. All right, Beanie, quit. Bobby and Bobcat are the best of friends. When their hometown of New Orleans was struck by Hurricane Katrina, they lost everything, as did everyone else. Only by staying together could Bobby and Bobcat survive. This is the true story of their remarkable friendship. And I just love true stories. <clears throat> Beanie? I can't read if you're going to bump my hand. <clears throat> neither, Bobby, <laughs> neither Bobby nor Bobcat has a tail, and some say that's what brought them together. No one knows for sure how they met. Perhaps their owner had a soft spot for pets with no tails. But the two Bobbies, as they now have become to be known, were exactly the friend each other needed at exactly the right time. And this is their story. <clears throat> the city of New Orleans on the mighty Mississippi is a place where many people call home and pets call home. Jamming with jazz and dressing up fancy for Mardi Gras, it bustled with life day and night. But on August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina bore down on the city and everyone who lived there, including a wisp of a cat and one puppy. <clears throat> Winds roared to 110 miles an hour. Rain pounded hard and fast. Strong winds pushed walls of water from the Gulf of Mexico into Lake Pontchartrain. Some of the levees holding back the, <clears throat> back the lake gave way. Water poured into the city deeper and deeper. People who had stayed through the storm were finally forced to leave their homes. They had to say goodbye to everything. Many were told they could not take their pets. Bobby and Bobcat were left behind. Bobby had been tethered with a length of chain. Bobcat stayed by her side. Together in the silent heat, they waited for help to come. And here's Bobby, and here's his chain, and you see how long it is. It goes all the way over here to this post. So they're stuck, and the water is half up to the um, halfway up the car right there. That's all flood water. And there's Bobcat. Bobcat's not going to leave Bobby's side. After the storm, volunteers from across the country came to New Orleans to lend a hand. They brought food and water. They rescued people stranded on the roofs of their homes, and they rescued many animals. And there they are, all alone. But with so much damage and confusion, the two Bobbies were not rescued. Their food and water gone, Bobby finally broke free. She dragged along the broken chain with Bobcat close beside her. And there they are, they broke free now. <clears throat> In the early days after the hurricane, the two Bobbies tried to make their way around oily water littered with debris. After the waters receded, they traveled to the buckled streets with no place to call home. One day in January, four long months later, Bobby and Bobcat strayed into a job site. A construction crew hammered and saw, fixing up a motel damaged by the hurricane. A worker's dog rushed over to play with Bobby. The dog's owner, Rich, noticed Bobcat too. He saw how thin the two strays were and began feeding them. 
He trimmed Bobby's chain, leaving enough to jingle on the ground because Bobcat liked to follow it. But every time Rich tried to touch Bobcat, Bobby growled. After a week of caring for the two Bobbies, Rich got some bad news when his boss came to the job site. He had given permission for one dog, but not two dogs and a cat. He said Bobby and Bobcat had to go. And there he is, giving them some food and water. You like this story, Bean? Huh? You like this? I like it, too. Let's turn the page. Rich was determined to take them to a safe place, but Bobby still growled whenever Rich got too near Bobcat. She would not let him pick up or even touch her friend. So Rich rattled a bowl full of kibbles. Bobby followed the food, I love you too, to Rich's van, and Bobcat followed Bobby. I saw that. Rich drove, Rich drove them to a temporary shelter that Best Friends Animal Society had set up in Celebration Station, a former video game arcade. The shelter was completely filled with homeless dogs and cats, but a volunteer welcomed them in, even naming them Bobby and Bobcat. For their bob tails, they were placed in separate rooms. So each one had had their tail bobbed, and that's why he called them Bobby and Bobcat. And there they are, going into the shelter, finally. All night long, Bobby howled and barked. Bobcat paced back and forth. No one could sleep with Bobby making such a ruckus, so volunteers made a large pen for her and put Bobcat and his small carrier inside Bobby's new cage. Bobby laid in front of Bobcat and whimpered. The volunteers opened the small cage to see what would happen. The two Bobbies touched noses together again at last. You can tell they really love each other. For the next few minutes, the volunteers studied Bobby and Bobcat. They noticed how Bobcat stayed close to Bobby. They saw how he walked with his neck stuck out and how he carefully lifted his front paws, placing them down as if he were unsure of what he might step on. Someone waved a hand in front of Bobcat's face. Bobcat did not jump back. Another volunteer waved her hand. Bobcat did not even blink. Everyone was stunned. Bobcat was blind. All that time on their own, Bobby had been Bobcat's seeing eye dog. How about that? The volunteers and even an ace pet detective searched for their family with no success. One month later, Celebration Station closed its doors, but Bobby and Bobcat still didn't have a home. There was only one thing left to try. The two Bobbies made a television appearance on CNN's Anderson Cooper 360, and there they are right there. The very next day, the Best Friends volunteers left New Orleans. One of them drove Bobby and Bobcat to the Best Friends Animal Shelter in Utah, where they would stay until a new family could be found. They were on their way west when the news came in. Hundreds of people wanted to adopt them. So they left uh, New Orleans and headed to Utah. It would take a very special family to adopt them together. The volunteers made a list and invited everyone on it to come and meet the two Bobbies. Only Melinda and her Boston Terrier, Gus Gus, made the long trip to Utah. That night, Bobby and Bobcat had a sleepover with Melinda and Gus Gus in one of the cottages on the sanctuary grounds. Would the two Bobbies choose Melinda? This, I love this picture. That's Gus Gus right here. That's Melinda sleeping. And there's the two Bobbies, all one happy family. The next morning, everyone knew the answer. Bobby and Bobcat were stuck to Melinda like Velcro. They also liked Gus Gus, and he liked them. 
Finally, Bobby and Bobcat had found their new family. That is so wonderful. Now they live with Melinda, Gus Gus, and Amelia on a ranch in southern Oregon. Bobcat has a window seat to sit in. He likes to play with a robot vacuum cleaner. He turns it on all by himself. Bobby helps with the ranch chores. She goes along on horse rides. On hot days, she lounges in the frog and fairy pond. At the end of every day, Bobby and Bobcat snuggle up together. They have toys and treats and lots of new friends, even a camel. Best of all, they have each other. There they are. And this is about after the storm. Like thousands of others, the two Bobbies lost their family and everything dear to them when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. After they came to live with Melinda and Gus Gus, their veterinarian discovered debris, debris and grit deep inside Bobcat's ear canals. His right eardrum was broken. Did Bobby snatch Bobcat from the dirty floodwaters that had filled New Orleans? No one will ever know, but it is very likely that a blind cat like Bobcat would not have made it without Bobby's protection. In turn, Bobcat's friendship may have made Bobby stronger and given her a reason to go on. Bobby and Bobcat survived Hurricane Katrina. They did it by lending each other a paw. And isn't that what good friends do? We help each other when times are hard and times are bad. And that's what we should do now. Just be a good friend to each other and love each other. So I hope you enjoyed this story. I do have one little hint that I want to tell you about since it's summertime and it's so hot outside. The temperature outside, if it is 77 degrees, the pavement can be 125 degrees, which would be very hot on their paws, on your little pet's paws. So the rule is, this is how you can tell if it's too hot, you take the back of your hand and you lay it on the pavement. And if you cannot hold it there for 15 seconds, it's too hot for your pet. So walk your pet early in the morning or late in the afternoon, but don't let them get their feet burnt. So stay safe. We'll see you next time. And just remember, love each other and love your pets.